Welcome to the College of the North Atlantic's virtual open house. My name is Jessica and I'm the Student Development Officer here at the Cornerbrook campus. I'm going to take a few minutes to go through a campus tour with you as well as give a brief overview of the programs and services we offer here in Cornerbrook in another presentation. This video has been recorded and will be available for viewing on our website later this week in case you missed something or in case you want to listen to it again. If you have questions while this is playing, please feel free to write them in the chat. As you may already know, we are located in the center of the beautiful city of Cornerbrook here on the west coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. Our campus is located next to a grocery store, pharmacy, and restaurants. When you pull in the parking lot, you will see the front of our campus and main entrance as you see here. When you enter the campus, you will be greeted by one of our friendly security guards and be on your way. First, I'm going to head towards the Trades Wing just to show you what those shops are like. On your way to the Trades Wing, you will walk past the general office, which you can see here. Here is where you would go to pay your fees, find and fill out any forms, or speak to admission staff. Also, if you have any immediate questions and not exactly sure where to go, you can certainly come to the general office and the staff will assist you. Here we go. Once you come to this hallway, uh, you will take a left and walk past our student services department as well as our student council room. Here you can see um, this is our student services department where you would find our accessibility services coordinator, our guidance counselors, the student development officer, and the student development officer that takes care of co-op placements. Across from the student services department, as you can see right here, we have our student council room. So we have a student council on campus that meets once a week to deal with all of our student concerns or planning fundraising activities and different things like that. So we do have a room here that has uh, a boardroom table as well as some couches and supplies that we use for events. Making your way around the corner towards the trade shop, once you make your way around the corner, you will see the Trades Wing. So here is where you will find the Millwright Shop, Electrical Shop, Power Engineering Shop, GIS Lab, Welding Shop, and the Bookstore. Our first stop will be in the Millwright Shop. Students in the Millwright program receive the training required to be a mechanic for stationary industrial machines. If you were to take the industrial mechanic Millwright program, this is where you would obtain most of your education. Um, the theory courses would be taught in a classroom. However, all the hands-on practical components would be taught in this shop. As you can see here, it's quite large and it has a lot of different um, equipment to teach you exactly what you would need to know. In this shop, students learn how to become an electrician. So as you can see, there is plenty of space for students to learn the different techniques that they would need to know, as well as if we pop up the stairs, um, students would have their individual workspaces where they would um, learn how to bend pipe and put wires into back in the hallway you head down and here we would have the power engineering shop as you can see this is an amazing space for students to learn how to become a power engineer students can either complete one year and be certified to write their exam for the fourth class power engineering, or you can complete two years and then be qualified to write your exams for the third class. Heading further down the hallway, you would pass the GIS studio where students complete the GIS application specialist program, which is a one year post diploma program that a lot of students would come back and complete after they have a degree or diploma already. 
making our way down to the very end of the hallway, passing a couple of standard classrooms, we end up at the welding shop. This is where students in the welding program would complete all of their hands-on practical um, training throughout the program. As you can see, students have their individual workstations where they have all their own equipment and projects in there as well, as well as some bigger equipment that would be shared amongst the class. Just past the welding shop and on the opposite side, we have our bookstore where you would come in the beginning of the year after speaking with your instructors and picking up the required books um, and equipment you may need to complete your program. At the end of this hallway is also a door um, that leads to the outside and across from this is where you would find the natural resources garage. Here we have the natural resources garage. This is used by programs in the natural resources department um, to store their equipment and materials for their camps or their field work and different things like that. Back inside the main building, we're going to head back down the hallway past the student services department and head in the opposite direction. When we first approached this hallway, we took a left-hand turn to go towards the trades wing. Now we're going to go towards the right-hand side. Coming from the main atrium, if you take a right-hand turn, you are headed towards our cafeteria and our business wing as well as success center. In our cafeteria, you can see there's plenty of open space for students and staff to come enjoy their meals, um, spend time if they have breaks. Oftentimes we host events in here because the space is the largest we have on campus, as well as there's a ping pong table and often chairs um, or couches set up for students to come and enjoy while they're not in class. We also have cafeteria services that serve hot meals daily. Um, this is where it would be behind this closed gate. Um, it's a third party vendor, so it's not owned by the college. However, we have contracts with them that they would provide meals for our students and staff. Heading back in the hallway, we are going to head towards the Student Success Center and Resource Room. Once you come to the end of this hallway, if you take a right, you will just be headed down towards computer labs and classrooms. So down here we have about three to four standard classrooms with desks, smart boards, um, things like that. And then as well, we have two computer labs on the right hand side where students in some of the business and information technology courses would come to do their computer based courses. On the left hand side, however, we are heading towards the success center. So here you can see this is the success center that is open for students to come and study in a group or come and work on the computer workstations, utilize the printers, um, basically just a spot for students to come and complete their work or hang out while they're waiting to go to their next class or whatever the case may be. This space is heavily used by students because similar to the library, there are study spaces. However, it's more comfortable to meet as a group here because you're not worried about keeping the noise down. Obviously, you have to be respectful here, no yelling and screaming. However, it is heavily used by students to come and just feel a little more relaxed um, in this center. And again, further down the hallway, we end up at our resource room. The resource room is where you would come for most of your accessibility services accommodations. The resource facilitator offers sessions in organization and time management, learning strategies, test taking, and anxiety reduction techniques. The resource facilitator is knowledgeable in assistive technology and offers individual training sessions on using various software and resources to support you with your studies.
If you were to walk through these double doors, you would have the option of going downstairs towards our daycare facility and our practical nursing and personal care attendant labs, or upstairs towards the business wing. If you were to go upstairs, you would have the early childhood education classroom. Um, there are classrooms and labs for the business administration accounting program, executive office management program, comprehensive arts and science transition program, software development program, as well as the computer systems and networking program. We're gonna head back now towards the main atrium when we first came in, and we're gonna go to the opposite side of the building. As you can see when you enter the building, right next to the security desk, as I mentioned, is the Library Learning Commons. The Library Learning Commons is a commonly used space for students um, of all programs to come and do research or utilize the computer spaces or private study spaces, um, as well as the printing services, and to obtain help from our trained professionals who are here to help with things such as finding resources for your research projects, helping you do proper citations, or just helping you find um, a book or a resource that you're interested in finding for personal use. Heading back towards the rear side of the library, you can see that there are rows and rows of books and resources for students to use, as well as cubicles for students to study um, a little more privately than out in the open, as well as computer spaces and printing facilities. We are now going to head towards the Natural Resources Wing, where a lot of our programs in the Natural Resources and Engineering Technology departments take place. First stop is the biology lab. In the biology lab, programs such as the Forest Resources Technician Program, Fish and Wildlife Technician Program, Agriculture Technician Program, and Environmental Engineering Technology Program take place in this area. Heading back at the hallway and around the corner, we are headed towards our chemistry lab. Similar to the biology lab, the chemistry lab is heavily used by students in the natural resources and engineering technology programs. As you can see, this is quite a large lab um, with plenty of workstations for students. There are also classrooms along here, as you can see, 1005. These are standard classrooms where theory courses would be taught to our students in the natural resources and engineering technology programs. Lastly, we're gonna head back out towards the main atrium and head upstairs just so I can show you um, one more lab space. As you can see here, if you entered in and took an immediate left turn, you would enter the staircase, which leads you again, either downstairs towards the practical nursing and personal care attendant classrooms, which we will head to now. Here we are in the bottom floor of the college. And like I said, this is where the practical nursing and personal care attendant labs are, as well as the daycare. Towards the very end of this hallway is where our daycare facility is. So the Fisher Daycare Center takes care of children from infancy up until school age and has three different spaces based on age groups. As you can see, the practical nursing lab is set up as if it were a hospital facility. So here's where students would learn to care for their patients um, and do any necessary treatments with them. Um, you can see here, we've got a couple patients here for students to train on, um, as well as all the necessary equipment that they need to prepare to go into the workforce. Across from this lab is our 
personal care attendant lab, which unfortunately is not open right now for us to go in and have a look at. However, it is quite similar to the practical nursing lab as we just shown here. We're gonna head back upstairs now and go to the top floor just to show you one more lab and then our tour will be clued up. Heading upstairs again to the As you can see, when we come up over the stairs, we have a beautiful area here for students to hang out between classes or after class uh, before heading out for the day that has a bunch of natural light and beautiful view of the parking lot and the city. As you can see, if we go this way, we're heading towards the engineering technology based classrooms. Heading towards the hallway here, you can see that we have some boards for the different programs, um, some standard classrooms, some standard labs. We have a physics lab right through this door, but we are going to head towards our electronics systems lab. Now we're going to pop into one of our electronics labs where students in the electronics systems engineering technology program do a fair amount of their training. Heading back out now, past the physics lab and past the classrooms, again towards the main atrium where we first started. Although I cannot take you down there right now, if you head straight down this hallway and then take a quick left and a quick right, you will head to all of our other classrooms on the third floor. So as I mentioned before, this could be in the business and information technology um, department or our civil engineering, um, classrooms are down this way, and a lot of our computer labs and things like that. We're gonna head back out now um, to the main atrium to conclude the tour.